everybody. Hey. <laughs> we are here answering questions again for this Friday lunchtime chat. <laughs> um, and we have a special guest star today, too. This is Anna. Say hi, Anna. Isn't she so cute? She was just born, what, what do we say, Sunday. So she is brand new. Trying to get her used to being in the house a little bit. So we'll see how she does. <laughs> May have to run her back outside in the middle of this, but. But she's doing good so far. She never leaves Carrie's side. So we're like, all right. She doesn't. She loves Come on me. in, Anna. Her sister's Elsa, obviously. Yes. Yes, Obvious obviously. Naming. Elsa and Anna. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, this is little Anna. She's going to hang out with us today. Maybe she'll have some answers, too, about gardening. She will definitely have a lot of answers about how to eat it, I'm sure. <laughs> you had her out in the garden a little bit ago. You are showing her flowers. I told her she was torturing yeah. her. That was mean. She liked it. She was looking around at all the flowers and the plants that we had growing in the garden. She had fun. <laughs> so I'm about to send out a notification to everybody that has our app to join our, our stream. So if you're in the live stream now, and you want us to answer your question, now would be a good time to throw it in there. <laughs> I got to find a link now. I should have done this before. Here it is. <laughs> uh oh, now we're watching ourselves. We're still new at this live streaming thing, y'all. Bear with us. It's okay. This is only our <laughs> second time doing this. Third time now. Yeah. Yeah. It's been fun, it. though. It has. It's been awesome. Yeah, you guys have always been fun. Yeah. So the format is basically just we're just going to sit around, answer your questions, hang out with our goat, have yeah. some fun, very chill. That's our goal for this type of thing. We love we love doing this. Do we ever soak seeds? We've got our first question. Um, okay, here's here's what we think about soaking seeds. If if I were better about remembering to do things, I would soak seeds. But what always ends up happening is I, I soak them too long. And we've done tests where we've planted things outside and then we've also soaked seeds and we've done it the right way and they sprouted at the same time. So when, I, when we did that test, that told me that I, I shouldn't really worry about doing that anymore. Now, for specific things like beets, it might be worthwhile. Um, it would probably help with germination. You don't have to spend as much time keeping them watered. So I might consider it for beets. That's probably the one exception. Um, New Zealand spinach, another one. Those two are pretty difficult, but that's our feeling on soaking. Uh, one moment, let me send this notification out. All right, another question here. Aphids. So aphids are an easy one. Um, for now, you can just spray them off with the water hose. That's all you have to do. Um, or even just like a little spray bottle. Could even do it because it's just on seedlings so you mm -hmm. can probably just do some do a little spray bottle spray them off you can also get this as moment insect spray if you really want to if you really want to go at it but you really don't need to do that and then also try and encourage ladybugs you can also buy ladybugs on amazon um so we've done that before it's yeah. really nice but it's more fun just to grow a bunch of flowers that ladybugs are attracted to and then you have flowers and ladybugs <laughs> which are nice um another question are we going to include flowers in the app? So yes, we have a lot of flowers we're going to be adding very soon into the app. We want to remain focused on things that are edible or that are medicinal, but that covers a lot of flowers. So it does. that's how we're going to expand. Um, I'm it, definitely going to be adding a, a lot more though. We, we have a lot on our list. And if there's any flowers in particular that you want to see added in particular, email us at info at seedtospoon.net with your suggestion. And then... We will add it to our list because we go through like the priorities. So some pe there are some plants that people have requested like hundreds of times. So we're going to be doing those first. And then we just work our way down the list of the most requested. So if you have any particular flowers, let us know. And we will add it to the list if it's not already on there. Yep. Yeah, great comment here. From Tanya. Uh, lace wings too. Those are also something you can do use for, for aphids as well. Mm -hmm. So what are the questions you'll have? How's it going out there? It's mm -hmm. mid-April here. We 
we pretty much we pretty much don't plant a lot outside except for the cool season stuff until after Easter. That's usually our kind of uh, it's safe to do that now. We had a, a, a night the other day that was like 38 degrees, so we had all of our tomatoes and peppers and all that stuff like moved indoors. We've been hardening it off over the past few weeks, so we went wild planting a little bit the past few days. I mean, I've got a picture showing you all what what our garden looks like right now. So this, I just ran outside and took this picture. So. It's been a lot of fun. We've been going through and planting out our tomatoes and our peppers and eggplant, lots of herbs. And flowers. <laughs> yeah, lots of flowers. <laughs> lots um, of everything. And then we started seeds for beans mm -hmm. and squash and cucumber. Um, we're going to sneak in some more radish around the cabbage and things like that. They're going to take a little bit to get big. I don't know how our cabbage is going to do. We were pretty late on planting that, but um we'll, we'll see out. yeah i mean even if we don't get the full head of let or uh, of cabbage <laughs> we still like to eat the leaves of it because it still tastes really really good yeah um great question here about what i need to do take our picture off. oh is it still up there oops yep. sorry Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> good thing you're here <laughs> can you still plant garlic uh pnw do you know what pnw is uh, keep Pacific snowing. Northwest? Okay, yes, that's right. <laughs> um, yes, here's what I would do with garlic. I would uh, so the it, garlic wants to go through a some freezing temperatures for a few weeks in the winter in order to really grow large bulbs. So one way that you can hack garlic and trick it is take garlic and put it inside of like Ziploc bags. I, I encourage the heavy duty ones because you're gonna be putting them in your <laughs> freezer. Um, so we use like the heavy duty, you know, sliding lock Ziploc bags and we put soil in there and we put the garlic cloves in there for about three weeks and we trick the, the garlic into thinking it went through a winter. You'll get much larger bulbs if you do that. So, um, definitely recommend doing that with garlic. Um, snow on the ground, Deborah. Oh man. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I keep seeing pictures and videos of people posting of snow. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The great thing about potatoes, we had a late freeze last year and we had potatoes that were already like two feet tall when the freeze hit and they all died back. But within a week or two, they were right back to where they were. Yes. So they potatoes do well with the cold. Um, One Yard Revolution is a channel up in Vermont where he plants potatoes pretty, or pretty early in the season, like directly in compost piles for the extra heat and stuff. So um, check out him. He does a lot of cold weather stuff. What zone are we in? We are in zone seven in Oklahoma City. Yep. So if you are still in these cold weather environments, like um, you can still plant plenty of things right now. So spinach, kale, lettuce, herbs, chard, all of that is going to do great with that cold weather. So if you go into the app, it will have uh, planting dates that are calculated for you based on your nearest weather station. Um, if you don't know about our app, well, I'm, I'm sure you came in here through the app, so you know about the app, um, but that's the point of the app. That's why we built it. That was the first reason why we built it was because we wanted an app to do that. So yeah, exact planting dates because mm -hmm. having to sit there, look at the back of the seed packet and be like, okay, two weeks before last spring frost. And <laughs> oh gosh, I, I can't tell you how many, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I don't like doing that. So the app helps so much with that. Uh, great question here about how often to water. So this is the way that we go about watering, basically. For the first few weeks after we transplant, I'm keeping water on them. You know, especially that first week, I'm watering them every day. I'm kind of helping them through. Once they get established, I back down to basically a strategy of only watering whenever the soil about three inches down is dry. And at that point, we will water the whole garden a lot. Like we will run sprinklers for several hours and water everything really, really well, trying to mimic a very strong rain. And then once everything gets fully soaked, we stop and then we wait until it's dry three inches down again and we do it again. So obviously there's exceptions if I'm starting things like if we're doing succession planting on beans, then I'll, I'll give that specific spot extra water. Um, we also water with fish fertilizer, usually once a week, once every two weeks, once we hit the growing season, um, depending on the plant too. And you can find that information in the app as well. Um, question about garden plus tab. Think about adding a harvest progress bar. 
That's a great that's a great suggestion. Yes, I would love to do that. We have a lot of things we are working on adding now. So um, Patrick, our one of our developers has been hard at work going through and we've got all of y'all suggestions that you've sent over the past three years categorized and prioritized and we're going through and we're building them out. I can tell you now we're starting with custom plants. That's going to be going in. We're building it next week. We've already kind of architected how we're doing it. So next week we'll actually be building that out. Um, reminders for when to plant. We're, we're doing that next. And then after that, we're going to have better organization for like a large garden. So if you have 20 banana pepper plants, we group those together and make it to where it's better, better handled in a large garden. So we have heard your feedback. We're going to be adding a lot of things. This is a great suggestion to um, uh, Andrew. I know you're watching the live stream. We need to get this thing added into our, into our, mm -hmm. our database. Cause it's a good one. I really like the idea of having a visual like harvest progress bar mm -hmm. and that would not be hard to do. Like I'm sure if Justin's watching, he already has the code in his head for it right now. <laughs> He'll probably have it done before the end of the live stream. <laughs> um, okay, so it got done on 34. Some of the plants wilted. Uh, it depends on what it was. If it's tomatoes or peppers, then probably not. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but I got to be real with you. It's probably going to be better for you just to go get new plants. If it was broccoli or something like that, they probably shouldn't have wilted anyway, but they're going to be fine. It just depends really on, on what it is. Um, and really tomatoes and peppers are, and probably cucumbers, like those heat loving plants can be real sensitive to those temperatures. And like peppers, especially once they're stunted, they don't really come back. Um, sometimes they will, but I've learned just to bite the bullet and start over if, I'm, if I mess up and leave especially them Especially like on peppers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those definitely get stunted and you always just restart. Um, tips about growing trees indoors. Or, um, okay, so I'm, I'm going to start with the tree question. Um, a great tip for growing trees indoors is to use large smart pots. So we have a, like a 30 gallon smart pot that we have a cherry tree in right now. And it's been outside, but we can bring it indoors if we need to. And um, you can do the same thing with lime and lemon. Um, in the you know, in the winter, you can just bring them indoors. Um, so that's the number one tip for how to how to grow a tree is to use a large smart smart pot like that. Um, make sure you give it plenty of fertilizer, plenty of love, and all of that. <laughs> um, are there cool season crops you can still grow during the summer? Um, so spinach and spinach is going to be tough to, to try and grow during the summer, depending on where you are. In Oklahoma, it's very hard because we get in 100 degrees. If you're in Denver, you can probably grow it all summer. Um, it really just depends, but they, once, if, if you're getting above 90, then I would think about turning to some other greens like, um, uh, sweet potato greens uh, are edible. We've turned to those New Zealand spinach, um, collard greens do well in the summer. Kel will grow in the summer, but it turns bitter. So we don't like it as much. Now, one way that you can help with all this is to grow them on, uh, the side of your house that's shaded in the afternoon, basically. Um, yeah, we try to use shade to our advantage in mm -hmm. the summer. And it really helps to extend the growing season, at least. So that way, once it does start to get hot, you, it'll still survive for a while while the temperature is increasing. But yeah, it won't last all summer, but it'll definitely help to extend it. Also, things like carrots are considered a cool season crop, but in a lot of places you can grow them all throughout the summer. You can do um, a lot of uh, succession planting on those where you just continue to plant. Um over and over, you know, every, every week, like with beans right now, we have a new, a new round of beans going out from now until July. We'll have different varieties of beans that do well, um, in different temperatures. So, um, and then another tip I want to give for this, because one of the reasons why you may be asking, I, I know the big reason for us is we want to have greens in the summer. So we turn to microgreens a lot in the summer as well because we can have a whole tray of kale growing and we harvest them at two or three inches. And um, that's, that's a way that we have a lot of greens through the summer as well. Yeah. And you can grow those easily inside too. Which kind of goes into the next question here. So um, plant cycles. Um, you know, I don't know as many of these, like we just started gardening about five years ago. So I'm just now learning some of these cycles. So um there's definitely a cycle to things. And I noticed that when the trees started leafing out, different things started coming up. Um, fish started doing different things because I'm into fishing too. So uh, that's definitely something I want to learn more about. If you have any book re recommendations on where I can learn more about cycles and how they relate to different things, uh, let me know. I'd love to read something on that. 
Um, tips on planting watermelon. Um, so one tip is just to plant it directly in the ground. We don't really mess with transplants on watermelon. We've had a lot, a lot more success if we just plant them directly in the ground. Um, if it's a small transplant, it'll probably be fine. But if you have a larger one, um, sometimes they just go through transplant shock and it slows them down quite a bit and it's just not worth it. Um, also start with smaller watermelon, um, ones that are, you know, just like not the, not the large ones. Yeah, so start with those. Anything, anything smaller is going to be easier to grow because you're not mm -hmm. having to grow it to the extent of the huge one. Cause I can't tell you, like we were growing watermelon one year and we had it. It was so close, and then a rat or something came through and gnawed at it, and uh, we were you can so put cages around them. So out of like hardware cloth, you can make those, and you can put yeah. that around the watermelon as well. You can also grow them vertically on cattle panels. Yeah, I was going to say that. If you're growing the small ones, growing them vertically really helps too. Yeah. Um... So problem with Cherokee purple. Yep. They are a tough variety to grow. We've had issues in the past too. The, um, they're an heirloom and I like growing them, but they can be finicky. Um, I would make sure you're giving them plenty of compost, plenty of fertilizer. We like the Espoma fertilizer. Um, making sure you're not giving them too much water. That's one of the biggest mistakes people make with tomatoes is, is overwatering them once they're established and throw some basil around it to help with companion planting. That's the biggest biggest tips I can give with how to help with those Cherokee purples. But that's a finicky variety. Um, and some varieties that do really well that you might want to look at just to have, uh, so you have a balance of the things that are hard and not so hard. The Parks Whopper is, is, does really well and is pretty easy to grow. Also cherry tomatoes are great tomatoes to start Again, with. Again, anything smaller is always easier. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, smaller tomatoes. So those cherry ones are great. Um, tomato pruning, how often? Um, you know, this it depends on how you're growing them. I mean, we've had tomatoes that we've had grow over a cattle panel arch that we don't really prune at all. And we let them go wild. We've also had tomatoes that we try and grow on a small little trellis that we keep pruned down to two or three stems. I think you just need to determine how many stems you want to have or if you just want to let them go wild. Um, if you're going to let them go wild, they need to have plenty of space. Um, or if you are going to prune them, then you need to, you know, have a strategy around it. It just depends around your trellis. That's the way we've always looked at pruning. Um, I know people say that pruning suckers and all of that can, um, can make it to where you get more tomatoes, but we've gotten plenty of tomatoes by not doing that. And sometimes those suckers save us because parts of the plant die off when you cut, cut off from it or, um, plus I'm a lazy gardener. I just like <laughs> letting them do their thing and give me what I get. And we get, we plant lots of tomatoes. So we, we always end up with a lot. Um, tips for dealing with a squash vine borer. Uh, it is very difficult. The number one yeah. tip is to wrap the bottom of the plant in aluminum foil um, about two to three inches down in the soil um, because they, they only lay their eggs down at the base of the plant. And if they can't get into the plant, then um, they may go away. But um, sometimes that doesn't work. So make sure you use like the, the heavy duty aluminum foil and do a couple wraps and of start it as and... early as possible mm -hmm. that you can get some aluminum foil around there. Cause I mean, as soon as they come up, the squash vine borer can hop in there. Depending on planting. That's yeah. a good thing you can do. Have a lot of herbs Just around prevention. it to try and hide your plant basically. Mm -hmm. Um, This is something I would love for us to be able to do. Um, in order to do this, we need to be able to go through and have a database of all the plant illnesses and what pictures of all the illnesses look like. And one way that we've approached the app is we don't source data from anywhere from like, we're not importing data. We're going, we're doing the research, we're consulting, we're like hand typing the data for the app. And that's why we don't have you know millions of plants like other apps may have, but we try and focus it on things that you know from the grocery store, that you know from a farmer's market. and um, so when we deal with plant illnesses, I think things like tomatoes would be easy for us to start with because there's, you know, a few core diseases that there's a lot of pictures out there for, and we could maybe try and buy pictures to use, but like we have to build out a database of it. So, um, it's a really good idea. It I is. I'd love to have that. <laughs> yeah. And like, you know, like identifying pests through a picture too. That's something else we, we would love to be able to do. Um, it's on our list. I might have to run what? run Anna back outside. I don't know. Yes. This is Anna. In case you just joined, this is Anna. She was going? born a week ago. I'm here. I'm gonna have to run her back out. Hey. Okay. Um, let me go back into the questions here. 
you scared of all the people? There, there you go. Let's see. We have not grown artichoke successfully either. Um, it's something we are still working on. So, um, unfortunately, I cannot give you a lot of tips on artichoke, but it is a difficult thing to grow, at least from where we are. Um, the seeding squares you can actually buy in our Park Seed store. We have links to that directly in the app. Yes. And I'm glad that you yes. brought that up, too. Because you can win one this yes. month. Yes. So this is the seeding square. We, are, we have a contest where if you comment on any of our YouTube videos from the month, you are entered to win. And for every video that you comment on, you are entered to win. Yes. So thank you to Seeding Square. We will for... be doing a live stream on the 1st yep. to announce the winner of it. Yep. So make sure to join us then. So, but you can buy these through our Park Seed store, and soon you'll be able to buy them directly through the app. Um, so that'll be coming. Oh, really and soon. there's a discount code too. Yes. So if you do, if you do go through and do that, it is. Or do you have it up there? No, I got this oh. thing here. So we got little things we can throw down <laughs> here in the bottom. But I need it, to put our it's, discount code it's all there. caps spoon and then fifteen. I'm gonna type it here. Okay, that's probably a good call. <laughs> okay. And it gives you fifteen percent off of off of the entire order there you go 15 percent spoon yeah. 15. um okay so anything that you've added into the app you'll always have access to once we go paid so don't worry anything that you add in you will always have access to you just won't be able to add new plants um, unless you're um, a paid member, but I, I want to go over the pricing a little bit. Again, it's going to be less than a packet of less than a price of a packet of seeds per month. So um, three ninety nine, three forty nine. That's that's where we're looking right now per month, and we'll have options for seasonal and yearly as well. So um, let us know your feedback on that. But that's I, I feel like that's fair for the the, the price of a packet of seeds. Um, and there's a lot of features we're going to be adding before it goes paid. So we're working on adding those features now. Um, again, going uh, custom plants, reminders, better organization for the for the garden. Um, we have a number of bug fixes that are going out tomorrow that um, y'all y'all sent in of uh, suggestions. Also, things we've been working on. So you're going to see a lot of things rolling out in Garden Plus. Um, last month we dedicated to you know we, we just came on board working full time on this app in February. And the first month we dedicated to getting like the infrastructure built to where we can add on to Garden Plus and do a lot of stuff. So we had to re-architect a lot of stuff and we've done that now. And now we're going through Garden Plus and continue to send your, your suggestions because we're going directly off of your suggestions. And um, that's how we're deciding what to, what to work on. Um, great point here. Fertilizer is soon going to be a problem. So um, we use organic fertilizers and organic fertilizers should not be impacted as much by some of the fertilizer shortages. Now the prices are still being impacted. I'll tell you that um, for sure. Um, because we bought, so some of our fertilizer on the small scale, Espoma is the way to go. But if you have a very large garden, like we do, typically we buy the same ingredients that are inside of Espoma, but in bulk and then kind of make, make it ourselves. And we bought it some the other day and it was, twice the price of what it used to be. So it's definitely gone up, but it's not going as much as some of the chemical fertilizers and some of the other ones. So um, bone mill, blood mill, that's what we're using for a lot of our homemade fertilizer, fish mill. Um, I've gotten really into fishing in the past few years. So we're making a lot of that fish fertilizer ourselves. It's a gross process, but you can do it. Um, but, and also compost, but again, that's gone up a lot too. We had a load of compost delivered the other day and it was, you know, $600 more than it was last time we got it. So things are definitely going up. Um, there's no doubt about it, but if you use compost and you use organic material, then you're going to be feeding the soil and you're going to be, uh, it's less work you're going to have to do because you just got to keep adding compost. And then you can also make your own compost too. Like, we have a lot of guides about how to make your own compost. So, um, seed to spoon.net slash compost is the mm -hmm. link for that. I have a big blog post all about it. <laughs> um, gnats and bugs that come into plants to overwinter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, there's a, a spoma spray that works really well that we use in our seed starting area to deal with gnats. Um, and prevention is key here too. So mm -hmm. whenever you water, try to water from below instead of up above, it'll keep the top not quite as moist. And if you empty out that bottom tray too, they won't have the 
the source of water. Um, and then also we use a lot of fans too in those areas and it makes it harder for them to fly. So they don't like it quite as much. So yeah, we always go with prevention. A uh, great suggestion here on winter sowing. We'll get that added to the, to the starting method drop down. Um, we don't have that in there now. And honestly, we probably need to have that drop down be uh, things you can add in there too. Um, I need to think through that. But if there's any other suggestions of things we should add that drop down, let us know. We'll get those added. Um, sweet potatoes like the heat. Um, so we're not even really planting them here in Oklahoma. Um, typically, that's one of the last things we're planting in May, June time. The tips for planting them, we plant all of our potatoes and sweet potatoes inside of smart pots because it makes harvesting them a lot easier. If you plant them directly in the ground or in like, um, like a, a raised bed or, or something like that, and you've got to dig down to harvest them, then you can easily cut potatoes or sweet potatoes or things like that. So yeah, yeah. With, with smart pots, you can just dump them out. And makes it so much easier to search through too, instead of having to shovel and dig. Yeah. Carrie, how does the baby's uh, goat breath smell? Anna? I mean, she just, she drinks milk all day. So, I mean, she's <laughs> kind of like a baby's breath, yeah, right? She eats a little bit of grass. She was nibbling on some grass. Yeah. But <laughs> she smells pretty good. She does. Not she smells bad. like a baby still. It's amazing. Gives me um, baby fever. So a growing dome, like a geodescent dome. Um, if you heated it, I would think, uh, depending on if you get enough light up there. I don't know how much light you get in the winter, um, being not that far north. But um, I think there's at least something you can grow year round. Because if you've got one of those domes, you can be growing spinach and kale. And you, there are several ways you could heat that through, like just like a heater or compost piles or, or things like that. You know, we saw a random video too about somebody having a, like a hot tub inside of one mm -hmm. that helps to like keep the temperature <laughs> mm -hmm. and humidity up. Yeah. That was a good idea yeah. too. <laughs> um, the number one tip I think we can give about having success in getting tomatoes from indoors to outdoors is to not start them too early and uh, to make sure you harden them off before you put them outside. So Carrie just made a video last week showing how we harden off our plants and talking about that. So that's one thing. But also, if you start them too early, then it can be hard to keep them alive. So try and time it where they're ready to be planted, you know, at like two or three weeks post sprout. About that time, they're looking for their first fertilizer. Um, you know, we made that mistake this year, too, of planting some of them too early and then some of them. That just we just didn't do a great job of keeping alive as well as some other ones that we, that we started a little bit later. So, um, and you know, we like to do rounds of tomatoes because sometimes you're just kind of timing it to see when the weather is going to cooperate. Sometimes it's like right now we're mid April, it looks pretty good here in Oklahoma for the next few weeks. Sometimes it's the end of April. Um, so with tomatoes, we like to just kind of time that. Um, Christina, I mean, our. Um, our opinion is the best place to find this information is in our app. So if you go into any plant in the app and you go to the friends tab, then you can see all of the things that grow well next to each other, as well as things that don't. And there's a lot of features we want to be adding. We want to add in the future related to this, um, showing like a graphical interface on that type of thing. Um, tips on strawberries. Um, well, containers and shaded, um, I guess it could be too shaded is one thing I would say. They do need, uh, you know, sun until the afternoon. The best success we've, have, we've had with strawberries um, are ones that get sun until about, you know, two or three o'clock. We, uh, we, we also grow them pretty much exclusively in smart pots, like the big ones, the big round ones. Mm -hmm. um, but really, um, and one, another thing about strawberries, we have a video that went out last week about strawberries. There's two different main types. There's June bearing and there's ever bearing. Make sure you have a mix of both because the June bearing will give you a bunch in June and the ever bearing you'll get more of a kind of a extended harvest going. Um, tips for starting peppers from seed. The number one tip I can give you for starting peppers from seed is to have a high quality seed starting station. Um, that biodome really makes a difference. It really holds the heat well. It holds the moisture well and have a heating mat below because the peppers really like the heat, you'll see way better results if you use a heating mat with peppers and with tomatoes. 
that was kind of part of our problem this year because those biodomes did too good of a job and the peppers and the tomatoes sprouted way faster than they ever have in the past. So yeah, they end up, it, we missed time. We were shocked because yeah. I went out there. I was like, whoa, the peppers are already coming up. Yeah. It used to but, take like yeah. 20, like 20 days up to, uh, sometimes for some of those peppers to germinate and they were all up within a week. So, um, so how, yeah, definitely a heating mat. How do you know when your garlic is ready? The tops will start uh, dying and falling back. And really you can harvest garlic at any point. Um, starting in June usually is when we start harvesting and then, I just kind of leave it in the ground and keep harvesting from there. And typically we harvest through it all in a hurry. Can never grow enough garlic, it seems. We eat a lot of garlic though. We do. Pretty much every meal. We'll Onions have a and garlic. We, we have a lot. Um, saving seeds. It depends on what it is. Things like beans are really easy. Things like tomatoes can be more difficult. I don't bother with tomato stuff. Again, I'm more of a lazy gardener. I don't I still have the time for it. Um, if we got in a situation where I had to, then I would. But um I'm fine just buying a new pack of tomato seeds every year. Um, things like beans, we have saved seeds on because like for black eyed peas, we're saving those seeds and we're eating on them. And then we'll plant ones that, you know, we have let extras of. Or We've also saved like cantaloupe mm. and, mm -hmm. and things like that. The Varieties that we really like, we saved if they're like an heirloom variety. But a lot of these hybrids, you can't really save the seed on anyway. You could, but you don't know what you're going to get. And but there are tips. So for each plant, there is, well, I guess not each plant. If it's possible under each plant, it has a section for saving seeds and it goes through like how to go about doing it if it's possible. So check that out too. So if there's something in particular that you're looking for, there's a section in there for it. Yep. Amanda has a great tip here for planting cat catnip next to tomatoes. Uh, unless you have cats, that could be a problem. You might attract <laughs> the cats to the tomatoes, but um, we've got an electric fence around our garden. So maybe you have the same thing. Um, another, uh, great thing that Tanya mentioned here, do not prune your bush tomatoes. So your Romas and your San Marzanas, don't prune those, but do prune the indeterminates if you want to prune. But I mean, again, like a lot of times all of those indeterminates run wild, just over a whole cattle panel and just let them, let them do whatever they want. Um, now if I had an area where maybe I had limited sun and I had to max them, like, and they weren't getting enough sun, then I ha I'd have to prune them down. But here, the... The, the more that I prune, the less or the more issues I have with sun scalding and other issues like that. So I need the, I need the shade for the fruit for the from the leaves. Um, peas and cucumbers turn yellow and died super early last year. Typically turning yellow can mean one of two things. Well, it usually means lack of nitrogen, which is caused by one of two things. The first thing is lack of nitrogen, not having enough nitrogen. The second is you're watering too much and it's flushing all the nitrogen out of the plant or making it basically where the plant can't take nitrogen up because there's too much water. So fish fertilizer yeah. is how we fish fertilizer and then make sure you're not overwatering. Um, and you can also add blood meal. Uh, it's an organic ingredient you can get um, to add into the soil. It's more of a long term release of nitrogen. So the fish fertilizer is like a quick release. Um, the best way to garden in limited space. Definitely um, using your vertical mm -hmm. growing areas. So we have a lot of different trellises that when, whenever we were in the city, we grew vertically as much as we could. So that way we were, you know, saving as much space as possible and also square foot gardening too. That way you have just the one square foot that you're focusing in on. And that way you can plant a lot of things in that one square foot makes it really simple, especially if you have limited space. Um, James, uh, adding custom plants is what we're working on next week. We have architected the code and we will be putting the code to paper, if you will, next week. So mm -hmm. we're very excited to get that out. Um, that's one of the top things we've wanted to add for a while. And um, we are definitely, definitely working on that first. Um, a good caution here on catnip too. make sure you plant it in like a container or something like that because it can spread and take over. That really goes with with all with all mints um, yes. in general. <laughs> um, carrot sprouting can be difficult. Um, we use burlap in the same way that people use boards um, and we had pretty good success. We also use seed tape with with carrots because, um, some of the problems we've had in the past with carrots is not going through and pruning them down the way we should. Again, we're lazy gardeners. So, um, seed tape makes it where we don't have to worry about that because the seeds are all, are all spaced out and everything. 
Um, you're welcome, Daisy. And for anyone else that just joined our discount code through anything that you get through Park Store that you can find links all throughout our app is Spoon15. So I'll put it up here for a second. Um, Spoon15 will save you 15% on anything that you can get through our app. And we'll be having, well, we'll have the ability to buy directly through the app here, here really soon as well. Um, getting through the questions here. A lot of just nice stuff. Thank you for, for everything you are saying about liking the app. Did I miss one? There we go. Yep. Okay. Skipped one. Blossom and rot. Blossom and rot. This is a common issue with tomatoes, and the root cause of it is lack of calcium. Now, this is kind of like the nitrogen thing I said a minute ago. How you get to the loss cal to lack of calcium is one of two ways. This is not, there's either not enough calcium or there's too much water, and it's making it where the plant can't uptake the calcium. So what I would do, um, and sometimes this happens to us, um, if we get like a real rainy stretch, there's really nothing you can do. You just know that some of your yeah, tomatoes are going to have There was one year it. that like a lot of our zucchinis, tomatoes, peppers, like so many different things just kept getting blossom and rot. And it was just because we had a rainy season. Not much you can do there. Yep. But I guess the smart pots, if they were movable and in the, the smaller smart pots, we could move them in inside. Yeah. I've gotten so much ring. Um, fungus issues. So fungus issues are usually most prevalent if it's a very wet environment. Um, so that could indicate overwatering. Um, also, it could, depending on, on the plant, um, if it's like, uh, it, there's that milk spray you can do for, for um, powdery mildew, because that's a fungus. Um, but that's the first thing I think of when I think when I hear about fungus issues is is overwatering. Um, how do we make our own fish fertilizer? Well, um, <laughs> Dale really wants me to make a video about this. I think we should. I oof, I think we should. I keep um, saying it's it's going to be pretty gross. <laughs> well, sometimes I catch fish on the good days, and then we eat some of the fish, and then the rest of the parts we throw in this little blender thing, and <laughs> voila. It's fish fertilizer. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's, not, not that's much exciting it. to it. Scrolling through y'all's questions here. Uh, cucumber starch are starting to turn yellow. That is an indicator you may need to fertilize them. Um, also, I guess, depending on where you are, um, try and get them outside. Um, but, we try and only have plants, you know, two to three weeks old max indoors because I don't like to fertilize them when they're indoors. Typically, um, I like to get them outside the first time I, I fertilize them. Sometimes you have to. Um, companion plants are already in the app. So we have um, on each plant that you go into, there's a friends tab and uh, that will show you all the companions for each plant. Thank you, Nikki. Let us know. Um, if there's any other features you'd like to see or anything too. Um, I misread the last question. Annual subscription would be nice too. Yes, we will have annual for sure. Um, hugo culture. We mm -hmm. have an accidental hugo culture bed because the property that we live on had a giant pile of wood that we threw some dirt on. So we're like, let's just, let's just try it. So um, what I'm going to try is planting a lot of tomatoes and pumpkins and things like that on the top and around, let them kind of fall over. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'll let you know how that goes. I'll be making videos about it, I'm sure. Uh, what size smart pot is best for sweet potatoes? As large as you can get. Yeah, we usually do like the 20 or 25 gallons. So that way they're large enough to hold a lot. Um, usually we put about mm, four to five in, mm -hmm. in one of those. And that way they're still kind of movable. They're very heavy, but they're still movable by us. Um, cardboard. So if you have Bermuda anywhere near you, put down cardboard is what I recommend because Bermuda is very difficult to fight off. But if you're in a different situation, you may not need it. But everywhere I go, there's Bermuda, it seems. Mm -hmm. And we just put down a layer of cardboard and then about three, three feet of wood chips, two to three feet of wood chips generally. And then let that break down. And at, by year three, the soil is pretty good. And we're planting directly in the soil, but we're doing raised beds and on top of it until then. I'd say we're we're on year two here at our place, and yeah, there's it's, parts that it's are already good. looking pretty good too. So 
yeah. a couple years makes it makes a huge difference. Um, tomatoes that look flimsy and weak in the stem. Um, I'm pretty quick to to start over a lot of times, but um, usually what I'll just kind of keep those bit plants and baby them back, and usually sometimes we can get them back, but um, I don't know. Possibly leggy. Yeah, that's like leggy probably. Seedlings. If they're leggy, that's fine with tomatoes because you can plant them deep. Mm -hmm. So um, that's probably the best bet for those is just to plant them deeper. And then hopefully they, um, whatever conditions were causing them to have that issue to begin with won't be, won't be going on anymore. Yeah. So if it is leggy seedlings, what we always do is lower the light, make sure it's like right on top of it. Always water from below. We have fans going on yeah. them all the time, especially if they are ones that are, you know, in in the inside getting started still. Those ones we always put fans on if they're not outside and getting wind. Uh, shout out to David the Good. Uh, he's one of my favorite YouTube channels. I crack up all the time. Carrie always <laughs> knows when I'm watching his, his videos because I'm always just cracking up at his random songs and stuff. It's probably my favorite gardening channel. Um, and definitely the cow manure uh thing bit us too it was horse manure that we were buying off of craigslist when we lived in the city and it was the horses were eating from fields that were sprayed with amino pyrrolid and it wrecked all of our tomatoes so at that point we decided we were only uh getting poop from animals we own and hence why we have goats now yep. it's like two years ago we, we thank you anna two years ago we had like us. dogs and cats and now we have like hundreds of farm animals all because we need well first first because we need their poop and now they're like our best friends so yes. you know because of course, who would look at her? This? Look at this little thing. <laughs> um, San Rosanos are flowering but falling off. 80s, they shouldn't be falling off from like they'll start to fall off in the 90s, but not the 80s. Um, I mean, obviously, make sure they're getting plenty of water. Um, too much nitrogen, I think, can also cause this. Don't quote me on that, but I think I think that's I know it's too, too much nitrogen causes it to produce too much green, and I thought it made it not produce flowers at all, but maybe it makes it drop flowers too if it gets a sudden in, in flush of my nitrogen. So um, those are the first things that come to mind. Um, companion planting, what distances? It really depends on what it is. So like with tomatoes, I'm putting basil all around them, sometimes in the same smart pot. Um, same thing if I'm trying to protect my squash, where um, sometimes companion planting means like if beans are listed as a companion plant, that means what's planted after it does really well because the nitrogen is left over in the soil or what's around it does really well, like right next to it. So sometimes, it really depends yeah, on that. Sometimes there's other companion plants too, that can help to attract beneficials that when those beneficials come, they see the pests and then they want to eat the pests. So they help in that way. So that doesn't necessarily have to be in the same pot, just somewhere in the vicinity of it. Hey, James, I appreciate the super chat. I didn't know we had the super chat. I didn't know that we had that turned on. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Well, we need to set something up for what to do with that money that comes in. We'll, we'll talk about that. Thank you. Um, companion planting in a grid layout. Yes, that is on the list of something we want to be able to do. Um, it's probably going to be later in the year before we get into the visual interface. Now we're getting into a different level of complexity of code, but I have a couple prototype ideas that I've, I've worked on a little bit and I have some ideas for it. So, um, that is, that is on our list of things we want to get done. But some of the other things I mentioned earlier, like custom plants and reminders and more of the organizational of, um, which is kind of getting towards the grid layout. I think the ultimate solution is to merge them together. I've also gone down the rabbit hole of like, should we look at augmented reality where you can like take a picture of it that way? I, I don't know. I'm playing with ideas. I would love to hear y'all's ideas for this as well. So let me know. I mean, I know like I generally don't want to be in the metaverse or any kind of alternate reality when I'm in the garden. Like that's the point of the garden is to get away from that, but it could be useful too. So like, just, you know, let us know what y'all think on that. Yeah, Boston Minrod, it yeah, the inconsistent watering. Basically, the overwatering of it is, is what can cause that for sure. Um, moldy seed starting. Um, the biggest tip is to make sure you wash them really good in between. I know that doesn't help you right now. Um, or use fresh seed starter mix too. Yeah, or if you use old stuff, you can bake it. Mm -hmm. um, 
look up like exactly. I don't I don't remember the exact details on time and temperature, and I don't want you to burn your house down if I tell you the wrong thing. So I don't look that up, but you can you can bake them for a little bit. Um how to correct nitrogen level if it's too much or too little. Um, if it's too much, just wait a little bit because it'll it'll go away. Uh, the plants will use it. Um, if you have an area where maybe you can squeeze some plants in, then plant some stuff that's going to take the nitrogen up. You know, um, that's very rarely our, our issue is too much nitrogen, unless it's a tomato. Um, I guess technically, I, I don't know. I don't know how I would handle too much nitrogen if if I were in that position. Too little wow. though <laughs> is easier. I mean, that's you just. Um, for the quick, what, what I like to do for nitrogen is I do fish fertilizer, it's quick release. Um, and then we do the blood mill for more of a long lasting nitrogen. Um, so that's pretty, that's pretty much all we do for nitrogen. Um, the blood mills in our fertilizer mix that we make. Oh man, more snow. I know. <laughs> man, snow seems so long ago. Sorry to brag. Sorry. <laughs> Um, but hallway work until the end of May. Maybe I mean, if 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 you had grow lights, um, you could you, you could definitely pull it off. Um, but you'd have to have. I don't know. I would think you'd have to have grow lights even at that point that are start. If they're starting to flower, then they're going to have to have like broad range spectrum grow lights and stuff. Um, and it's tough to grow stuff even like up against a window that's facing the outside too, like a south window. I mean, if, if that's your only option, though, I'd definitely, you know, do the best you can. Mm -hmm. um, mushroom compost. Um, I've used it in the past. It's definitely better than the no compost. Um, I'd have to, I don't know off the top of my head, any concerns that would come with using a high level of mushroom compost. Um, I don't think it would affect the pH too much, um, but yeah, I just, I honestly, I don't know enough, enough about mushroom compost. I have, our compost strategy has always been to try and get as many sources as possible. So we have like five different sources of compost we're getting right now, four that we bring in externally and one that we make ourselves. So, um, and then also we have like a variety of animal inputs that go into one we make, whether it's goat or llama or rabbit or chicken Got a lot of animals. Yeah. <laughs> um, covering plants outdoors. So. Well, we get a lot of severe weather too. So besides the cold weather, we do do a lot of covering. We do do. <laughs> Sorry. Um, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm cheesy. I See that go for me. Um, so we get like hail, like random hail storms, really strong winds, oh. things like that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Things like that would be why we would cover with like plastic sheeting. But then if it's warm out, we're going to be really quick to make sure that we take it back off because we can overheat that plant really quick. Also in the summer, we will use shade. So we'll build shade walls out of T posts and like hardware cloth or something like that. Um, not hardware cloth, shade cloth. Yeah. Um, so that's, we would use the hardware mesh to hold the, the cloth up. That's why I said the hardware cloth. Y'all oh, can't see it. She's down here laying on me. <laughs> Um, rabbits are a great solution if you live in the city. So they're talking about. Um, I know, I know. It's okay. Okay. Make sure you didn't fall between us. Um, cabbage worms. The number one thing I can tell you about cabbage worms is to use BTK. Uh, it's called Caterpillar Killer. It's a naturally occurring soil bacteria that you can spray on your plants and it kills the caterpillar when they eat it, but it does not harm humans. It's, it's organic. Um, also insect netting is something else, um, another cloth basically that we put over our plants, uh, insect netting, and that helps with all types of insects. Uh, cabbage moss are one of the big ones that helps with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That goes back to the, the question about covering. We don't do plastic sheeting, but we do the insect netting too, over the PVC dome hoop houses that we make. And that way we can help protect against these cabbage worms too. Um, some tips for watering our fabric pots. Um, so usually we, we're just doing like a straight up overhead sprinkler. And um, we have th like two or three of those set up in the garden. 
because we have flowers all around our smart pots. Like we have stuff. I'm not trying to water all of it. So I just run that and, you know, pretend it's a giant, a big rain for a few hours all through the garden. Um, other things you can do that um, work well are, um, especially in the summer, if you have like a toma tomatoes and peppers, you can put them inside of a kiddie pool with like two inches of water in the bottom. It'll absorb water from below. We've done that in the past. We've done soaker hoses. Make sure hoses. You, you drill holes in the side of that kiddie pool yeah, so it call. doesn't overflow, especially if you get a rain. Don't leave them in there, things like that. But. Yeah, because you can, they can get too much water that way too. Um, so, um, other like you can use the soaker hoses. We've done the drip hoses, but we've really just gone back to doing the sprinklers that water everything and just watering it all in really, really good. And for us, like right now, that's like every three or four days, um, but it really just depends on temperature. Um, community features. This is definitely something that we have been, we've talked about that we want to add in. Um, there's some complexities that come into that but we do want to make it to where you can share things from your garden and make it more of an interactive experience. So if there are other apps out there that have done a good job of this, that allow you to share things, but don't create um, communities that require policing and moderation and all that type of thing, because we don't want to get into that space for sure. Um, let us know what, what kind of examples you've seen out there of that type of thing. Um, Megan, thank you for letting us know. Um, if you're having itch issues with, with glitches and bugs, please please reach out to me. Um, you can email me directly at dell at seedtospoon.net. Um, I'm wondering if you're on Android, though. That's the first thing that comes to mind. There is an issue. It's actually a Google bug that got released in January that we tracked down a few weeks ago and put out a blog post about, but it's affecting about 3% of our users on Android. And the workaround is to use our app through Firefox as a web app. So if you go to app.seedthespoon.net in Firefox on that Android device, it, it'll work fine. At least for everyone that's emailed us that we've told them about this and they've told us back, hey, now it's, now it's great. So um, that's the first thing that comes to mind. If there's other issues though that you're running into, please let me know at dell at seedthespoon.net and we'll work with you directly to figure out what's going on and we'll get it fixed. That is our number one focus right now is getting Garden Plus rock solid and getting it to the point where we, um, you know, we're comfortable charging for it and we're, we're proud. To, yeah, that, that's what we're working on. So, and yes, we are definitely going to be adding more fruits, vegetables, and flowers. I know that's really common. Everybody always asks for that. So if there's any in particular that, that you are wanting, just let us know. You can email suggestions at info at seed to spoon .net. Yep. So do you have any other questions? I think we made it through most of the list. I'm scrolling back up to see if I if I missed anything earlier. But if y'all have any other questions, oh, we talked about this did, a little bit. I think we it? just we were going fast because I didn't know how many questions we had left. But rabbits are definitely the number one uh, recommendation for producing your own compost if you live in the city. Yeah, especially if you're in an urban environment, that rabbits are something that's really easy to add in. <laughs> Okay. Um, one of the first things that I would do in a new yard is chart the sun and figure out um, where you're going to have sun and how much sunlight you're going to have. And I'll be honest with you, before we started gardening, I did not ever really think about where the sun was and how it, where shade was created and all that. I just, I never did. Um, but it's something you need to become very familiar with as a gardener so that you put your your um your gardens in the right place one tip i can i can definitely give is to start with these uh fabric raised beds there's a number of ones out there the smart pots are the ones you can get through our app um but those are, are portable so if you put them in a place where you find out in august that it's you know shaded um you can just move them somewhere else so that's a great tip for getting started to start with those and then once you learn what you like to grow and where everything is, then you can start to plant perennials around them and, and do all that kind of stuff too.
Um, seedlings starting out fine for a week or two and then wilt or stems get thin and they fall over and die. So this sounds like classic damping off is what this is called. And it's caused by a number of things. It can be um, seed starting mix that has some sort of a fungus or a virus in it or something that causes it. Um, there's just a number of things that can do it. So like just basically what I would recommend is to make sure you're doing these things. You're starting with containers that have been sanitized or that are brand new. Um, you're using seed starting mix that is brand new or that's been sanitized. And you're getting high quality seeds. Um, make sure you're doing all of those things are the biggest tips I can give. Some other things you can do to help are like Carrie mentioned earlier, if you run a fan on your transplants, that can help them become stronger. Um, and always make sure you're watering from below too. Mm -hmm. the, the biodome should help you. If you haven't used something like that, check it out. We have links to the biodome in our app. We've used every seed starting out station out there. Um, from every store, we, we've I'm OCD. I try them all, and the Biodome is far and away uh, the best one, and it's going to last a long time. And you're going to be able to plant many different rounds in it, whereas some of the other ones are only going to last you two or three plantings before it starts to fall apart on you. Mm -hmm. um, Alabama and herbs look weepy. Um, man, your herbs should be doing great right now this time of year in Alabama. Um, Possibly it's too much water. I feel like I've said this a lot, but that's the root cause of a lot of issues, and especially with herbs, you know, like rosemary and sage and lavender and thyme, and all these all these herbs come from the Mediterranean area, and they are are used to getting a lot of rain and then not much rain, and so they do not do well if they're sitting in water for a long time. So we pretty much plant um, all of our herbs in raised beds or fabric raised beds or something where they can get up out of the ground so they're not sitting in water. That's the number one thing that comes to mind. Um, I saw this question, but I don't know what that means. I'll be honest with you. I've got to look into it. So I will Google that and, um, and learn. So thank you for bringing that up. That sounds cool. Someone else mentioned it too. King of the North tomato seed. That someone sounds cool. Um, I don't know. Um, I, I will look into it and see if we have that and I will, I will give them a recommendation that we've, we've got people looking for it. So that one sounds cool though. Um, John Stark, like the, who's the, the king of the North? That's the, that's the other one. It's not the Starks. Yeah. The North. Yeah, the other They're going to be so mad at me. The people who love Game of Thrones. <laughs> um, best time of the day to water plants. Um, morning. That's the best time because the biggest issue that comes with watering plants is if you water them at night, then you can have water sitting on the leaves and that can promote virus growth and fungus issues Powdery and all sorts mildew. of things. Yeah. yeah. That's the number one way that plants get into trouble is with water moving things around the plant and water, sit them, water sitting on them too much. So if you water in the morning, then you have the sun that can help dry the plants out and and all of that. So that's the best time to water is, is in the morning. Um, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I've done it before. Yep. This can be a big cause of, of, of seedlings wilting and dying is if you have them in, like if you have a biodome and you put too much water in there, this will happen. We did this accidentally for some of our seeds. So mm -hmm. we know firsthand. So you, you don't want to have them sitting in water all the time. You want them to be able to dry out. <clears throat> thank you. You know, so many people, we all said stuff like this. I want to say thank you, Jason, everyone else that said that you all love our app. I mean, it's unheard of um, to have this positive of a, of a community um, on, on YouTube. And we really appreciate all of you, all the support we get, our YouTube comments. I mean, like going through them, it's always like it's, it's an uplift, uplifting experience, and that's rare. It makes doing it fun. Yes, <laughs> yes. And it's so rare on the internet and rare on YouTube, and we really appreciate y'all. We have a lot of fun doing these. So thank you. We um pretty much at 1 o'clock now. Um, any last questions before we call this, uh, call this a day? We'll do exactly – we'll do this again next week. Oh, let me remind everybody yes. about the seating square – so we have our contests going this month where you can enter to win. 
your own seating square. This is ours. It's kind of dirty from being outside. We use it all the time. Um, but you would get your own. And, brand new one, not dirty. Yes, brand new one. Not this one. That's dirty. <laughs> yep. Um, all you need to do is be subscribed to our YouTube channel and comment on any videos throughout this month. And you'll be entered to win as many times as you comment up to one comment per video. And yeah. tomorrow at 10 a.m. Central, we are teaching a class in downtown Oklahoma City at Scissor Tail Park. Uh, we're going to be giving away a bunch of plants and we're going to be live streaming that too. So um, join the live stream and learn about 10 different plants that you can plant right now where we are here in Oklahoma. But you can plant them. Most of these are going to be plant most anywhere, actually. And we're going to talk about why you should grow them. So join us for that tomorrow. It'll be 10 o'clock tomorrow. Um, and then again, we'll be doing this again every every Friday at 12 p.m. So central time, central standard D time. What's the D? Daylight. Daylight time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A couple last questions that, that came in. We'll go ahead and answer these two. Um, root crops we grow in containers because, um, well, we pretty much grow everything in containers, but root crops especially because they need real loose soil. And in containers, we can control exactly what soil they have. And here we have a lot of clay, and it can be hard to grow those here where we live. So we do pretty much all. Um, Especially potatoes. Yeah. Kara asks, what is the seeding square? So let's let's talk about that. So the seeding square is this template that you use for square foot gardening. So every plant in our app has a number in there for how many can be planted per square foot. And they all line up to one of these colors here. So for carrots, they're 16 per square. You can just put this in your garden and then you put one carrot seed in every red hole and you know that everything is spaced the right way and everything is nice. If you have OCD like me, it makes you very happy. It look, makes it look really pretty and organized. Yeah. Helps teach kids. It's a great I thing. I use it in a lot of my videos too. Um, the one I posted today, um, just before this, I used it whenever we were planting some bush beans out. So you can check it out and you can see it in action there too. Um, leggy seedlings. We have a video that Carrie made about this that talks all about how to avoid leggy seedlings. Um, make sure your grow light is very close to the plant. It has to be like, right up on it. That's the biggest thing. There are these adjustable plant hangers that you can like adjust. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so you can easily raise them and lower them. It's way easier dealing with those chains. We are working on getting them into our store now. Uh, until then, though, uh, you can find them on Amazon and places like that. So um yeah that's the biggest advice that we can give you but in in that that video we'll also go through like how to go about helping those seedlings too once you have leggy seedlings so yeah check It'll out our youtube in general carrie spends yeah. so much put so much work into our youtube y'all um she has so many good videos going out almost every day so go okay. check those out <laughs> she's really good at it i used to, to do the youtube videos and she's way better than i did so <laughs> check out our videos um, thank you for joining the live stream. Really appreciate y'all have all your great questions and we'll see y'all next Friday or maybe I'll see some of y'all tomorrow. Well, mm -hmm. I, I won't see you. You'll see me. I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. We can't really reply to the chat during the class tomorrow, but, but still we'll figure it out. We'll be there. We'll have someone like on being the voice of the audience. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do that. All right. <laughs> Bye everyone. Bye.